Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tayemba from Africa for the Africans, here to share a presentation with our family for our Ghana repatriation and investment tours, which we usually have in May and December. But this is going to go over general information about our tours for Ghana, uh, whether it's uh, the tours that we have currently on our website for May and December or uh, custom options. Uh, which is basically just going over the tour overview. So I have a presentation that we usually email for conference calls uh, with a whole lot of uh, pictures and group photos, and I'm going to go through. So I'm going to just uh, start screen sharing. All right, uh, so this, uh, this is the uh, newsletter email. What it has is a few attachments. You have a front and back of a postcard. Then you have a flyer. And those uh, postcards and flyer represent our Ghana tours that talks about the six countries in general, uh, from Ghana, Senegal, Gambia, Liberia, South Africa, and Tanzania. And the presentation as far as the land is a brochure. And that specifically deals with uh, Ghana. So Ghana is the only true country we have at this moment that we can talk about how we can actually, with 100% uh, set up, actually get you to move from the diaspora, settle in Ghana, get you access to land, and have you build your home and uh, put all those things in place from legal documents to all the legal paperwork you need. Uh, so that's what that Black Star Pan-African community represent. So those are the uh, brochures and the flyer and postcards for presentation of uh, that which represent the uh, Africa tours and investment. Let me see if I can get this thing to open up much bigger. All right, so this is the newsletter. I'm not going to uh, go through it. All right, so this is the same banner on our website, um, africaforthafricans.org, and this, that's our colors and energy, red, black, green, and gold. And that's aligned with the, the connection from Marcus Garvey to this, the modern day repatriation movement of connecting Africans or black people in the diaspora to the African continent. Uh, so this is just our flow of how we have things organized. So what you will see is just a whole lot of our groups uh, from December 2021, and it goes all the way back to December of 2006. So that's uh, 15 plus years of Africa tours and investments in Ghana alone. And then also since 2017, we've went to many other countries and expanded the itinerary. And I've covered over eight, eight countries totally as far as tourism in Africa, and a total of 10 countries as far as experience and traveling to and so this is our last um, group photo. And this was at uh, what you call a sin man, so the last bat. So this is a key part of our itinerary uh, once we leave in Cape Coast, Elmina area. Uh, this is a location uh, which is about 45 miles or 45 minutes, just to say, driving to the coast, which is Elmina and Cape Coast. That's where the two biggest African Holocaust dungeons were. So before, our ancestors were marched down into that direction. They were taken to a place called Asin Manso, which represents the, the last bath and then being set up to where, you know, it's like a, it's like a slave or a stolen African market uh, where ancestors would be sold and auctioned off and then they'll be taken to one of those following dungeons on the coast. Uh, so that is what that uh, connection um, represents. So we have two of those days, one day when we actually go to the actual uh, uh, Holocaust dungeon, I would say. They call the slave castles actual dungeons. And then this day, which is that connection. Uh, so these are the days where when we go to the dungeons, usually we set to wear all white. Uh, when we go to Sin Man, so usually we have a combination of red, black, green, and gold. So you see some of us wearing Africa for the Africans t shirts, uh, the gray and the with the red, black, green, and gold, and then the black with red and uh, black and green. Uh, so that's one of our basically programs that we have to just put it to where 
those of us that come from the diaspora can enjoy a reconnection. And then we have many other things that we go into. It's not a journey that we have it set up to where it's all about slavery. It's uh, two days, which covers historically. And so everything in the itinerary is basically just well balanced to where you have a little bit of everything. So it forms as a great introduction for anyone who wants to go to Africa. And Ghana is the ideal country as an introduction because you get a little bit of everything in Ghana. All right, and my second favorite country, Tanzania. Uh, so that's just, uh, those are two last two journeys that we took. And usually we have anywhere from an average of 20 to 30 people, but during the COVID era, what you're looking at is more closer to eight to 15, uh, basically about half the numbers that you used to getting, or I should say uh, 10 to 15. And so I'm gonna do the scroll down some uh, further. This news that I represent also, that's the information that anyone may need to just join any of our future conference call or when we do anything is just give you a Zoom link and you can just click on it and join us. And we usually have this monthly conference calls. And that's one of the other, that's the other two countries that we went to last year, Senegal and Gambia. So we have been completing all of our itineraries uh, since the world has opened back up from, you know, since, or I should say, since we've been in this COVID-19 uh, uh, protocol era. And all of the recordings where I have uh, list all of them on this YouTube link. And once you're on the YouTube uh, page itself, you'll see uh, conference calls and interview, all those recordings are all together. Uh, and it's a whole lot of them. As we begin to just document more information and share with anyone that's traveling with us, as far as just being prepared and all information that they may need. Uh, I, I don't think there's nothing that we haven't covered in conference calls or just the videos that we do. That's the whole goal for us to put Africa in proper perspective and give you just the fullness of it. Uh, now, one of my brothers was asking me about describing Africa uh, in certain ways, and I was telling him. You know, this you're gonna get a, from ancient, from dirt roads, huts, and then you're gonna get this modern day living, beautiful communities, advanced uh, just areas, and you know you're gonna get a little bit of everything. That's one thing I can say about African continent. Uh, you just get it all. So the journey is designed to do the same to showcase you the full representation of Africa versus just getting one or two sides of it. And all the tours that we have, we have a link for payment options. So anyone that's looking to travel with us, they can just look at the options. And uh, the goal is just to work out whichever options that anyone wants to use. And uh, once payments received, just send them a receipt uh, with the full details. And then we just keep things flowing. And then if there's a situation where someone can't make it and just you know, communicate with us, uh, we have lots of schedules. So the goal is always to move individuals around if something happens and then we have general terms that give the full details of refunds and cancellations. So that's on all of the tour links on our site. All right, so what I have here is just a list of this, all of our documented uh, journeys that we have that I am specifically organizing and also leading. And then anyone who wants this, any adjustments from me, all the people that we have that run the tour operation when I'm there, they're also, run tour operation outside of what me and them are doing together and they have their own side business or personal business and i'm in 100 percent uh support uh to them uh with them uh so whenever someone or a group wants to do something separate and they just come up whatever days the days don't ever matter because all we have to do is arrange the, the itinerary and then a lot of the dates and get them deposits and things like that, and they'll be ready to go. So as we're talking about um, these set Ghana tours for May and December, I'm also talking about how we can modify any of the itineraries for Ghana and then make that into a private journey and then assign you a tour guide and have the staff of people that we have available on the ground to connect you and make sure everything runs good. And then I'll be this available to manage anything or be available if there's anything that needs to be worked out. Uh, but Ghana is simple for us to do any kind of custom journey, specifically because I've done 20 straight journeys in Ghana and I've had all types of crews from 
and then all size of groups from the smallest group eight to the largest group uh, 42 and 43. Yeah, so there's not really much adjustments that we can make or not much situation that we don't have experience on handling and that's what I do in this uh, business. Uh, everything we do is just 100% uh, this experience. I've been traveling to Africa from 2004 and then been doing this business since 2006. So 18 years of this experience of traveling throughout Africa and then 16 years of just being in business and doing tours and taking over 500 people to over eight different uh, countries or I should say most of them is in, in Ghana because all the new countries that we have there just basically countries we've been to once or twice on tours and we're just building them up. Uh, so the bulk of the people that we've taken is still 400 plus from Ghana. And then also the 20, 23 schedule is, you know, the best thing I have is six countries and five schedules. And that range to just all of the seasons. Uh, uh, and I cover all the months uh, from March, April, May, June, July, then uh, you know November, December, and January. Uh, so nice uh, schedule with full details. All right, so right here, what I have is just uh, one of our bigger groups in Ghana that was uh, literally when the world was open back up and that was our first journey and only journey there in 2020 or to say our 2019 in Ghana. And below is the link to YouTube and Facebook. YouTube represent uh, over 3,000 videos and the videos are ranged from all the different countries we have done tours in. It includes slideshow, presentation, conference calls, interviews, repatriation and investment, tour members feedback, school supply, donation, drumming, dancing, African Holocaust, us on boats, us, enjoying the beaches, us uh, connecting with the ancestral celebration, shopping, networking, us uh, viewing land, building homes. Uh, so it just showcased this, our full enterprise connection into Africa and then showing people what we do and what, you know, so you can visually see things. And then I have a link to Facebook and Facebook represent all of the, the galleries of tours that we have ever done every single last one of them this covers over 28 different tours from 2006 all the way to the last one 2021 of all of the different countries including Senegal, the Gambia, Tanzania, South Africa, Togo, Benin, Ethiopia, Brazil. And then once you're on Facebook uh, you click on the link and you just go to albums and then uh, you just see the whole list of albums. Some have different uh, galleries. You know, one tour may have five galleries and then each galleries may have two to 300 uh, photos, but it basically is a full walkthrough from the beginning of the journey to the end. And so what I have here is a general topic list. And this general topic list is uh, set to where uh, once we go through it, it covers all of the topics and all the information and all the details that anyone need to know about any of the tours we have. Uh, some of the things we've gone over, so I'll just go through it real quick. As far as this uh, introduction about myself, uh, we literally started this business from just doing study groups from 2003 to 2004 here in Georgia. And that's how I learned about Africa, my roots, culture, and then just getting involved literally with black organizations and organizing my brothers and sisters to this you know, and doing events with them and participate in the events, you know, cultural events and things like that and build up our energy for just our knowledge of self and knowledge of just understanding what we're looking to do. Uh, so from there on, you know, since you're reading about Africa and studying about Africa, my focus is always like, okay, let's make some moves and travel to Africa. Let's do some research on the ground. So me going to Senegal and going to Gambia in 2004, that built the foundation of just traveling and studying and seeing how things is and being on an organized tour to Egypt with Dr. Renoko Rashidi that built the foundation to where I see how someone else did an organized tour and I just add my energy to it, which is more investment and thinking about the future of Africa and nation building and getting into markets 
you know, industrialized and enterprise and, and things like that that we may not necessarily be big on and do in America, but those opportunities are in Africa. So I saw that we can do Africa tours, but also just add investments to it by way of this business conference and educating ourselves and others as far as these things. Uh, that way we could you know, build what we have built to this moment. Uh, so the passion of just doing the research and putting the work in and just building the network and the connection uh, brought us a, a market to where now, you know, where you know where it's more and more people are interested in going to Africa and they want to live, do business. And so we become one of those foundation organizations that can actually help you with 100% of your connection to Africa. And it's just based on 15 years of uh, experience. And it's something that you just grow into by putting your work into and doing it. You're, you're doing your own business administration and your own technical administration. So you're learning these things. So I'm here to this share the knowledge and also this connect as much people as possible. Uh, so that's uh, the main thing as far as what we're doing. And the energy stems from you know, 100 years ago, you know, Marcus Garvey envisioned us connecting to African enterprising. And based on many things that didn't work out, uh, people like us and other groups of people see the great um, opportunity and, and, and see the vision of where our great scholars and our great visionaries like Marcus Garvey literally just saw an opportunity. So, you know, we're picking up and connecting and based on looking at different options of what should we do? Uh, should we keep on giving our money back to the system and keep on just having depreciated assets as the only thing that we have and financial investments and all these other people's banks and with the, all these other groups of people? Or do we just pave a fresh way and build from the ground up? So. The best thing I saw was for us to just pave a fresh way and build fresh from the ground up, build fresh relationships in Africa, and not take anything personal about how we were stolen and all of the, you know, all of the sick things that went through the process of how we got here and things like that. And just be at a connecting point to say, hey, brothers and sisters, we're looking at the, the future takeover of Africa from the Chinese, the Indians, the Lebanese, and many other groups of people that have been legally working to just take over the continent now uh, ever since uh, our many different all of our african countries have claimed independence uh, uh, independence where you basically are not ready to run your country and now you're in a situation where you have to call back your oppressors or you have to have indentured workers of people that were brought in your country from other you know based on the british bringing them there for indentured workers so now they're the ones that's running the top industries and running certain things in your country. And I've seen it in my life from being around different parts of Africa. And it's, it's, it's the same thing that you see in America. So it's a, it's a trip when you go to Africa and see it because you're thinking that, you know, you have a content with 90 plus percent of black people. And in some places like, you know, West Africa, you're looking at 98, 99% just all black people. Uh, but unfortunately that's the situation. Uh, so by, you know, so by just being in a situation where you're traveling to Africa and you're building you know, or you're gaining those knowledge, you're able to just say, hey, I see certain things, I see a vision in Africa. And so that's what we're doing as far as Africa for Africans and just literally just appreciate all the people that's been interested in what we're doing little by little, even though when we started off, it was just hard to find people out there in the world, but uh, we knew this was something that was gonna grow. And now that we have experience, we're actually putting our money where our mouth is and actually doing other investments. Uh, so that's kind of like my introduction vision of just, uh, our Africa tour connection. And I'll talk about the Africa tour schedule for this year and, um, and next year, there's six beautiful countries along uh, eight itineraries from coming up in the next uh, several days all the way to the end or the beginning of uh, 2024. Now tour overview, general terms of itinerary. Uh, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom where I have an actual tour overview. Well, excuse me, this is not the specific uh, Ghana uh, newsletter. So I would just have to click on the link to go to the uh, overview. Okay. Uh, so beyond the general information, one of the main things is you need a, a visa for uh, Ghana. So with the visa, what I usually do is send a visa email and it has attachments and sample details where once you click on the link and fill out your online application, you have, you know, you have a, 
application that you can kind of follow and any letters or any information that you need, all you have to do is just let me know and whatever letters or details, I'll get it, get them for you. And I usually recommend everyone do their visa literally about three to four months before they travel, especially if you're traveling in December. And then if you're traveling more so like in May, two to three months before you travel, because of uh, the busy holiday season and travel in December. And most of the time what we do is uh, group booking with Delta Airlines. So then we just work it to where we make payments and then we get access to our e-tickets usually about two months before we travel, or I should say one to two months. And then other options of our flights uh, are on United. So the option is usually direct flight from New York to Ghana or direct flight from Washington Dulles to Ghana. And that's on United. And the first one from New York is on Delta Airlines. And then other options is KLM from Amsterdam and Air France from Paris. So those are the sequence of uh, the best routes that we have had to where you just make your move. Yes, the Europe routes are a little longer. Um, but it's sometimes you're in that situation where you have to just go with it or pay three or four thousand dollars for a direct flight from New York. Uh, so uh, you're looking at tickets usually about closer to two thousand. But when we organize these things, the goal is to get people to commit early so we can lock in on deposits and lock in on, you know, basically the flight numbers that matches with the uh, the budget of the tour. Other than that, after a while, it just just goes up. And in that case, then we may not be able to accommodate flights, but then what we can accommodate is the full package on the ground where once you get your flights, you can just enjoy the ground package where everything is just included. So this one package is usually just flights and everything else and other packages, just no flights, but everything else on the ground. All right, so the rest of these, um, Topics is talking about this bringing the white outfit that I talk about and the red, black, and green and gold. Uh, this as the two ancestors today. School supplies for the, the the two or three different schools or orphanage and or places that we go where we just donate to children and just show as much love as possible. Now the baggage preparation at the airport: um, Delta, United, KLM, Air France. 250 pound bag check-in. So 250 pound separate bags, you can just fill up. You can just fill one up with school supplies or things that you want to get rid of for barter or trade. And then you have the other 50 pound bag where you just put your clothes in. And then once you get there and you get rid of the things you need to get rid of, then you can just pack things back up to where you can have space to bring all the crafts and cloths, clothing, all the things that you may purchase. And while you're in uh, Ghana, we always set a nicer repatriation investment conference or network gathering based on the group size and things like that. Naturally, if we have a bigger group size, we just usually have a big uh, con conference because then you know we use the budget to build that energy. And right, I'm gonna scroll down and and then I'm I'm gonna actually just find the overview and then I'll go through it. But these are some more highlights of some of the previous groups and the bigger groups are from our Ghana tours and you know the goal now is to build those other countries that we have on the schedule. And one of the ways I share information also is your Facebook uh, groups. So these are Facebook uh, groups and you just it's a way to just share information also just draw people interested to just join the group and the goal is just always just update the page with pictures, videos, conference calls, uh, just any kind of this documentation to this that represent the, you know, the current tour and inf individuals can just click on those links and then just see this a flow of this documentation. That's, that's what I, you know we specialize in. Want to make sure people have actual information they can click on, look at, and they can see everything that have happened or they see this how the previous journeys have been laid out and what we did on them. And, the, and all, you know, all of the people were traveling with us. So these are the list of all of those uh, groups. And then all of the uh, social links. 
I thought I had the website up. Let me, so next thing I'm gonna do is actually just click on the website and then go to one of the Ghana tour overviews. All right, so once you're on our website, Africa for the Africans.org, you'll see the MP3 player on your left. I just muted the audio, and then you'll see a slideshow that represents uh, photos over the last 15 years. Most of them are more newer than anything else. And they just and they represent several different countries we have traveled to. And what I do is try to just showcase them with the, the soccer jerseys we were in to just show what country we're in, and also the Africa for Africans uh, shirt, which uh, have specific countries on them. Uh, this one in the blue is uh, Tanzania. And this red, black, green, and gold, Ghana. All right, so once you're on the main menu, you'll see Black Star, Repatriation, and Pan-African Community. So once you click on that, it gives you all of the legal files, the full details, the introduction, the pictures, the videos, application, uh, getting started information, cancellation, refund policy, uh, vision, mission, all the details uh, for that uh, community, and you know, including Facebook uh, page where you can see this two and a half years of this uh, documentation. It goes from showing you we just walking up to an, a bare land, and next you know you see houses going up, you see a community being developed, conference calls, you see you see presentation from the chief, the people in the town, and you see this an active energy and 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 so on. So that is um, what we have in each of these links, there's full details. So now when we scroll down to example, example, we're going to Ghana in December. Let me just click on December 2022 and all of Ghana links showcase the same thing. All right, so overview and the overview that we have Instead of just going to the itinerary, I'm just going to do the overview. And the itinerary represents just the day to day operation. And I'll just explain the itinerary in a way where it kind of covers the overview and the itinerary. All right, so this is the tour overview. And I'm just pulling up um, a general tour overview of our December tour. And so these are the prices I was talking about that uh, covers um, full one cover the full package and other one just covers the land portion of the package. And then additional for a single uh, supplement. So all the tours that we have includes uh, transportation and tours throughout Ghana. And then if we have someone available, usually from the group, they can just do daily exercise and meditation sessions or individuals can just do things on their own. But just I put that on there just to encourage you know, those to be active and just you know wake up in the morning and just have more energy because these itineraries are just you know a constant go. Daily continental breakfast and gourmet dinner. So what's not included in is lunch. So usually we go to a location where you can get lunch and then you just order what you want, whether you want something traditional or international. Uh, so Everyone that's traveling with us, it's up to them to order things that they want to try. Beyond that, you know, content, so breakfast is what it is. And then gourmet dinner, uh, sometimes we go out, so you can just still just order what you want. And then beyond that, if we have a, just a group buffet, it just have a combination of all the things based on everybody's diet, based on when we collect information, right? So hotel accommodations, uh, two people to a room, and if individuals want a single room, they just have to let us know. We just do a single supplement for you. Uh, business and investment conference slash or networking. And then entrance and access to all sites and activities. Uh, not included lunch, group tips of $50 per person. And if there's any camera, camcorder fees or any of these fees that we just, or things that we just don't have uh, at the site, uh, individuals are responsible to pay for. Visa for Ghana, 60 for single entry. Um, which is good for about three months and 100 for multiple entry, which is good for one to five years. So that may be something that um, everyone may have to think about. I usually just recommend multiple entry because you get closer to five years than anything else. Now the schedule breakdown that what we have is based on, uh, based on 
the three main parts. So we're going to be doing Accra and then basically Great Accra and also the along with the eastern region and the mountains. So that's uh, four days. The first day, you know, is when we come in and that's usually just dinner and this orientation and this is not much really on itinerary. Then the next three days, what we have is this three full days of this tour. So one is a city tour and we just go around all of the historical parts of the city. So what we have on there is the W.E.B. Du Bois Center, George Padmore Library, Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, the Arts Center, University of Ghana campus uh, tour. Okay. Another day we'll have up in the Eastern region, Avery Mountains, uh, slash Tutu. So we will uh, walk through the century old Avery Botanic Gardens. We'll stop outside of Rita Molly House, home of Studio One. Uh, plus our foundation is also right there. Uh, we'll go up to Trinity Home uh, Foundation, Sash Academy, uh, which is a school in Tutu and we'll bring school supplies and uh, donations. Uh, we'll also go to the uh, Avery Wood Carving Village, so you'll be able to just get a nice shopping energy there. Right. And one of those days, uh, usually we just end up having the business conference in the evening. Now, the third day, we go to the African Ancestral Wall in Mingo slash Prom Prom. And that is a nice presentation of 90 plus of our ancestors, uh, big portraits, and our brother, Jerry Johnson, uh, does a great presentation and just go through all of it. And then we also just have a wonderful lunch um, buffet and we just get a chance to relax. And this is about 45 minutes to an hour outside of uh, Accra, outside of where we are at the hotel. And the same thing too, that when we leave from the hotel, we're looking at anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour on these three uh, journeys, whether we're going up to the mountains, out to the city or out in uh, Ningo Prom Prom. So that is the four unique days of our time in Accra slash um, Eastern region, Avery Mountains and Tutu. Now, once we finish, uh, we usually just uh, head directly to our Black Star Pan-African community. And uh, we go to see the uh, business office there. We go to see the 15 acres of land, the 60 acres of land. We go to uh, meet the chief at his uh, palace. Uh, we go down to the beach and just check it out and then you know, drive around the town and get a feel for it. And then we'll finish with that presentation and then uh, so based on the schedule, um, time or two, we have, we have an orphanage slash uh, school there also. So based on the group and things like that, we'll donate supplies to that um, school slash orphanage in our town, which is called Jahadzi. Uh, so those are the things that we have as far as a full program for that day. Then we're going to head directly. As a matter of fact, that drive is about two hours from our hotel or from Accra. And then once we get there, it's about another two hours to our final destination, which is Elmina uh, at One Africa Resort. And so once we get there, we have drumming and dancing, uh, waiting for his nice presentation. We have a nice uh, dinner buffet, and we just out there in the elements, just right um, on the beach resort, on the ocean, enjoying uh, dinner and enjoying entertainment, and just having a nice social night. And then the two active days that we have, uh, one is for the African Holocaust, so we'll go to Cape Coast, uh, dungeons and then we'll just have a full presentation of the African Holocaust there and it's very emotional and we just do a lot of preparation for things like that and once we come back um, we just you enjoy lunch and just, just relax in the afternoon and then we have a naming ceremony in the night and it's just during dinner time and it's very interactive as and then on the second day as far as the tour day we're going to be going up to Kakum National Park. So it's one of those adventures for those who want to enjoy a nice tropical and you know, exercise adventure. So you're literally going to be uh, hiking up into a forest. And then once you hike up into the forest, we're going to cross over these canopies that be swinging and things like that. Uh, we have lots of footage on YouTube on it. And it's just fun, it's exciting. And uh, if, for those who are in good health and shape, I just recommend it. Uh, but it's um, not really something if you can't really, if you're just not really active like that, because I've seen many people try and, you know, ask where this person that they say they did, after taking a few steps up on an incline and climbing up into the forest, they just give up. But it's, uh, I've seen people, I've seen the oldest person I've seen do it is uh, in their mid eighties and they were fine. Uh, so honestly, if they can do it, we can all do it, but uh, it's 
to each his own, but uh, these are some of the things that we have on all the tours. We have different activities that deals with hiking and canopy walk or going up in cable cars, whether you like Brazil or South Africa. And this, this try to just make or put something that's adventurous on there. Uh, even that walk in the botanical uh, gardens, uh, that's beautiful. There's a nice walk around the gardens and talking about nature and things like that. Also, we have on there, based on the time that we travel, we uh, visit uh, We visit a school. It's actually, let's see, it pronounced it uh, correctly. It's uh, Akoma, Akoma Academy. Uh, so I think the reason why this is not on this uh, schedule because when we go there in December, the school is closed. So usually the supplies go to the resort One Africa and to the children there. Yeah. And so, and also uh, while we're there on that day, uh, before we even get to the, the canopy walk, uh, usually just make a few rounds um, and maybe stop by a resort or, or someone home and things like that. So give you a nice little sightseeing of the area. It's a beautiful tropical area and it's lots of opportunities for more people want to build business and develop it. And in the nighttime, uh, when we have uh, dinner, uh, usually when we have One Africa, it's always focused on entertainment also. So you may have the DJs there, you may have people singing live music. Uh, and it's also where we're in December, when we're there, we throw our New Year's party and we throw lots of parties and social gathering. Uh, we've had people get married and we have had many different things. So that's our tropical energy there. Now, after that, we're gonna head out to uh, what we call a sin man. So I was talking about earlier, our last bath of our African ancestors. Uh, so that will, so once we finish there, we just head right up into Kumasi and we'll be in the Ashanti region for three days. Um, and it's a very light schedule. Uh, the focus mainly is the first tour date is University of um, Science and Technology, uh, Kwame Nkrumah University. And then we're gonna go to all of the cultural craft. Um, uh, the main one is in Banwer, or Banwer uh, which is the, world famous uh, Kente cloth um, center. Then you also have Intanso, and that's for uh, the Dinkra stamp cloths uh, to make your own cloth. And we also go up to the cultural center. It's the same like the arts uh, center in Accra, but uh, just mainly referred to as the Kumasi cultural center. And then there you can also have access to all of your crafts. So the main shopping is going to be there at both uh, the culture centers. Um, you have access to this a lot of shopping. And the good thing about the culture center, um, it's a, you know, we have it, we have access to it for two days. So the first um, uh, tour day, once we um, finish up, uh, we we'll go to the culture center, and then we end up eating lunch at Ike's Cafe, which is right in the culture center. So while you order your food, you can do some more shopping. Now the next day, we're going to go to the Ashanti Palace Museum, and then also the culture center. Uh, so that's uh, another light day. And then we have dinner, excuse me, lunch at Ike's Cafe again. And that's one of this, this big, beautiful, this uh, restaurant, they have a hotel, they have resort and they just keep on building up. Uh, it's a family that built their business here in the US. They're from Ghana. And then they went back and established more operation in Ghana. So you'd be able to just, just you know, enjoy that nice cultural energy in Kumasi, there's lots of, culture, this well, beautiful, maintained uh, city. So that gives you just the fullness of just uh, Ghana around the main city, the main parts, the, the main tourist sites and things like that. We've been to many other parts of the country uh, from the Western region to the Volta region to the Eastern region further into where we, where we have scheduled for this journey. And also been into the Branghafa region. And it's like literally up to like the center of the country. Uh, and the furthest we've been up to is about I want to say a good eight, nine hours into the country. And you can go as far as like 15 hours, I want to say, into the country to where before you get to the next country, which is Burkina Faso. So Ghana is just that uh, deep. So that is uh, the beautiful overview and it'll flow the same on the itinerary. And it's uh, different things could be added or take away based on if you're looking to do a custom tour, you're looking to connect with us um, and individuals can select any aspects of hotel, especially when they're doing their a custom journey, it's all good. Uh, everything on the itinerary is itemized at that point. And that's how we come up uh, with the uh, tour price. And that's based up. And what we have itemized is how we got the price that we currently have. 
And let me uh, switch from the uh, website, uh, which you just have tons of uh, details over to the uh, Facebook uh, page. And as I was saying with the Facebook page, the main thing I have set up is just photos and you, then you click on album and then you'll see these last journeys, December, 2021 and November, 2021. And you scroll all the way down and you just see, we just show everything literally just so people can see what we do and see the transparency, but we're open book and I've shared you know, my little boy is born into this world as that sim right there as a little baby and born into the world where we just we show everything that we do and we market ourselves. We do a whole lot of self-marketing and we're the ones are, you know, myself, my family members and friends taking all these pictures together and posing and just you know, just showing some, you know, showing our people something this more organic or more from the grassroots, but more just real as far as an experience in Africa, how we're coming together, moving from airport and out there exercising, having dinner together, touring together, this, you know, and this showing aspects of how we can just come together and just do business and investments because this is, you know, you have to connect people somehow before we can even talk about doing many things. Uh, so this is what we have been able to do in Africa and I've been able to accomplish a lot more in Africa than here because it's hard to just organize people here in America to do anything physically in Amer America, you know, and things like that. But uh, during um, in Africa, this opens up to more people who feel more comfortable getting land in Africa and building on it, building their enterprise and things like that, because now they know that they could build something organically to where they have the level of flexibility and they have the aspects of control over it to where a system or a country is not telling them how to run certain things and then trying to sanction you with certain law and certain things people may call discrimination and things like that. So everything that we have here is for our Pan-African family and that's what we cater to. If a group of anyone else want to do a journey with me, that's fine. I'm a business person who could call me and I can arrange something. I got crews all over Africa that can get anything done. But um, I'm here to lead these specific journeys and just enjoy it with you know, my brothers and sisters and uh, this document and share it and just market ourselves to the world that you know we're in Africa and this is our groups and we're gonna do something a little bit different and uh, we're gonna just build a connection and we're not gonna go to Africa and be fighting with our own people and, and ask them how, you know who's you know and go back and forth about who fault it is about us being stolen and things like that and I feel like we've made great connections and people have, are understanding who we are as a people and which is the most important thing this traveling to Africa with a diplomatic uh, energy. So that's why we use these t-shirts, Africa for Africans, and we just you know, support 100% uh, black owned business in Africa, because if my crew see me out there and they're like, you know, Romani, why are you at this uh, Lebanese hotel when we have a nice you know, hotel over here by Ghanaians and things like that. So that's the kind of setup that we have had. And it's, it's it have, um, made you know, people really understand what we're doing from the diaspora and showed us a lot of respect. And yes, you do have other people that may not be clear about what we're doing or may just be, you know, you know, people just uh, that's looking at things a certain way. But um, the more and more of us that go and travel and do these things, the more and more things open up for us in Africa. And that's what I have truly have seen. So let me flip over to the next thing that I have is uh, the YouTube page. So the YouTube, YouTube page represent uh, over 3000 videos. And so I have a lot of the videos broken on a playlist. Let me actually click over to home here. And so once you get on the YouTube page, you'll see all of the uploads. Um, and uh, the highlight of what I have is the multiple playlists. And it shows all of our journeys uh, from 2020 to 2021. And these are just big uh, playlists of just from videos, just a, maybe a minute or two to anywhere from 20, 30 minutes, but uh, most of them are shorter videos and just giving you this highlights. This is a link to all of the Black Star Pan-African community videos and another multiple playlists of other um, 
journeys you have taken. And some of the popular ones, South Africa, Brazil, Ethiopia, and then my famous journey in Egypt in 2004. And so the conference calls and interviews and things like that, I'll put right here on this uh, playlist. And then anyone can just, when she click on it, it's just lots of information and there's lots of documentation. So I just wanna show everyone the consistency and the realness of what we're about in this business. And you can scroll down and you see more conference calls, uh, whether it's the shows that I record here where we're talking about relationships or talking about pan-Africanism or talking about black economics or just whatever subject we get into. And I have a lot of them uh, categorized in, uh, the, in playlists. And this is the Instagram. It's just um, no specific order of anything. This flooded with this pictures from different countries and a few video presentation of our land and things like that. And it's just us just trying to showcase all of our best marketing and model photos and they're showing us just having a beautiful exciting time in Africa and this now literally just showing it all um, all right so let me uh, stop uh, screen sharing so that is just a, a overview of just our presentation as far as access to the documentation pictures videos and covering the different tours in this a general flow. But uh, the main thing is the details are there to where anyone who wants to specifically take time and read through the information, it's just uh, there. Uh, Cause you know, we can only cover so much in presentation. Uh, so hopefully everybody have a chance to just look through the, the uh, presentation that was sent. And then right now I just wanna open things up to where we can just dialogue about anything and any question that you have, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm open to answer it and talk about it in detail. And just want everyone to know that the call is being recorded and don't say anything that you don't want out there publicly. But if you do, you can always send me a message and I'll edit it out as best as possible. But uh, all the calls I do, I try to share with my audience of people, let them know that this is what we do. And we're here to present and go through details before we make any, um, you know, we accept any commitments and things like that. All right, so family, uh, just unmute yourself and just um, open up and let's uh, dialogue and appreciate everybody listening to the presentation and being available. Hi, Bomani, it's um, Chancia. I have two questions. Sure. The first, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. Good. The first question I have is about the two prices. Um, I missed something on that. One was, what were the two prices? I can't remember. One price is a, is a full tour package uh, that covers uh, flights and full accommodations. So that price range we have on the website uh, per nine to 10 day tour is uh, 3,800 to 3,000, excuse me, 3,800 to $4,000. And then what we have, other option we have is the land package. So basically you purchase your own flights and then what you do is you pay for the land accommodations and that's set for 2,500 for the nine and 10 day accommodations per the different countries that we have. And other costs, what we have on there is a single supplement, which is just additional to whichever package you want a single room in because all the package includes double occupancy or two tour room. Excellent. And one more question about, I know I asked you this before and I can ask you, um, talk to you about it later, but I was wondering um, about children because I would love to bring my um, son and my niece. Do you ever have children on these? Uh, yes, uh, it's um, fun for the whole family. We have people up to the 80s, and my son came when his, uh, you know, his mother was uh, pregnant and also came back when he was two years old and been traveling with me ever since from two years old up to now, and he's 11 years old. And uh, we have other people who brought their children from toddlers to infants to children to teenager to 
the grown children. Oh, out, outstanding. So it's, um, you know, it's what we call all age operation. Excellent, thank you. Uh, perfect, you're welcome. Hi, I have a question. Um, if you, if we wanted to explore um, and visit other areas such as um, Nigeria or just surrounding countries, what, what is the process and is that possible? Yes, uh, the, the best example I can do, of, I can explain with that is uh, you just basically stay in a country longer. Like uh, most of the time uh, we're there in Ghana and we're staying there you know, a week or two longer. So once you have your return ticket to go back to the US, uh, you basically just use the in-between time to purchase another ticket. Uh, example, you can fly from Accra to Nigeria to basically any parts of uh, Africa and, and then basically purchase a round trip ticket. And then, the, and then you purchase it within the time that you're coming back and you could just connect it to where once you get back from wherever you're going, you can connect right back to Accra airport and get on your flight to the US. Uh, so we have done that. And also people have driven to the Northern part of the country, you know, dr driven to up to Burkina Faso, uh, Togo, Benin, um, uh, the Ivory Coast and things like that. And then make their way back to Ghana to get on their flight. Uh, so that is an example. And then we have lots of people in the country to escort or take anyone around and people in different countries to assist them. And then you just basically pay for your accommodations and pay for whatever you need to pay for and things like that. So just to, so you do um, arrange, you can arrange guided tours if we wanted to do that, if we wanted to come maybe a week earlier or stay a week longer. Yeah, anything that you want to, you have to just be clear on it and it could be done. But what I'm explaining to you, you had mentioned if you wanted to go to another country. Correct. So I'm, Correct. I'm saying, so our visit to the other country, do you, do, does your tour facilitate that? And would you, would it still be a part of your tour? Would that be something that we would have to, do completely separate. That'll be no. something that you do completely uh, separate uh, outside. So it'll just be a complete different uh, price. We'd have to just itemize that different. So example, uh, you wanted to go to Tanzania to do a safari. Our people in Tanzania, our crew there handle safari. So what they'll do is just give us the price and give us you know, the price for the ticket and things like that. And you just put it together and you, know, you pay for your ticket and then we'll get the money over for those guys because now they're going to be the ones leading and organizing the tour because someone like myself wouldn't be there and things like that. Uh, so you would still, you know, we'll still work, in a sense, it's our people, we'll still work out elements of things, but right. it'll just be this, it'll just be like, AKA this additional cost. Understood, understood. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. But yeah, uh, we can make uh, many things uh, happen in Africa especially with the countries that, well, de definitely with the countries that we have set. The only issue that we ever have is just whatever country we have not been to or know people in because it's, you know, you, I can't vouch for people beyond, only people I can vouch is all the people I've worked with. And uh, we have, you know, we have driven around countries together and, you know, we've built a bond and uh, that represent about those eight countries that I have on the list. Excellent. And, you know, Naturally, any other country, you know, will be open to learning because that's the goal, uh, just to keep on learning new countries. Thank you. And um, it's, it's Chauncey again. I have one more question. Um, purchasing land, um, we, you mentioned that we would be able to do that. How long is the process? I think you said um, there was like um, different phases. It depends on who you're dealing with land. As far as the land that we have, as far as our 15 and 60 acres, uh, we can get individuals start building uh, within a few months. It just depends on how serious they are and depends um, how much they're willing to commit and we can get those things going. So we have a, just a process where we get you all your legal paperwork, including residency, um, your survey and things like that and uh, your deed and you can just literally just start building and living in the country and get you a temporary uh, apartment or a house while your house is being built and things like that. Uh, so those are the things that we have physically helped people with and the people that are living on a community, that's what we have done just to, you know, to explain in a practical sense that we have actually accomplished these things and we know how to get them done. Um, that's interesting. How long is the building process? 
Uh, the building process is about six uh, months and you're looking at um, like a three, four bedroom house, uh, about three bathrooms, one floor. The, you're looking at about uh, $60,000. So you can literally just make a layout to where if you pay $10,000 a month for six months, that pay for your house and you can just do it in those stages. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so when we talk about, um, when we talk about opening business opportunities in the area, what are some of the um, businesses that have started that have been successful? And what do you see as um, needs um, that are still um, opportunities in the country? Uh, yes, and it's going to differ. And that's why once individuals come to the country, they'll be able to see it. So when you're in the country, you can look at it from from many different uh, angles. Uh, one of the situations you can look at is infrastructure. Um, and that's, um, so I'll explain a few big business and small business. Infrastructure business uh, is great for those who can bring in heavy machines. Um, and uh, because, you know, a lot of things are done manually, which I think people are fine with doing it. Uh, but, you know, for, for those who want to just say, hey, you know, we want to get things done and we want to use more modern technology. Those who have the companies that can, um, provide those things are good to go. Uh, import export uh, is another great uh, opportunity of business. You set up a connection there in Ghana, like example, we set up a manufacturing um, or uh, industrial or warehouse set up there in the town that we're in. And then now we can ship whatever goods we're producing, ship it back to our business partners in um, you know, maybe in, in Georgia or wherever. And just as an idea of what you can do, uh, because what we're connect doing is we're building a connection of the world with the people that we have here in the U.S. and then also there in Ghana. So, so since we have a situation where you're limited on the amount of people that's going to move to Africa, very limited. You know, the goal is like to build relationship with people that you can do business with here and and kind of really create that international chain of us. You know, getting into the world of like manufacturing and distribution center and input, export, us uh, doing trades, us producing different things, us having a warehouse or just um, a factory for the sewing machines and whatever we need to produce, we're producing there. And it's instead of one of our big operations here in America saying, hey, we're gonna use the Chinese to, to, to get all of these things done now, they can turn to say, reach out to groups like us and then we build that connection. So there's a lot of things that's untapped that you're gonna see and it, it takes more of us from the diaspora to come in and do certain things. And it's nothing, no disrespect to just anyone anywhere in Africa, but it's what it is. You need, you need all aspects of your people to make it work. The brain drain is the biggest issue in Africa. The best people in the African continent has been stolen for the last several hundred years. And up until the last few months, the same thing, somebody got a scholarship that was a genius in Africa. And now they're being educated at Oxford and then they'll put them out there in one of those you know, plantations to where they serve and they'll be able to just build up their company, their energy, their enterprise and pay them top dollars. And, um, and, you know, just, and, and that's the consistent situation that you're seeing. So in order to fix that situation, the pool of market where you have the most talented, educated uh, black people that has skills from military to industrial to corporate, there's only one place I can think of, it's these United States and not no disrespect to no black people anywhere else in the world and things like that, you know? And I told people I'm from Jamaica, I, just, I see how things work there and you're comparing things. So you're telling people like, literally we have some great talents and skills because some of the best people from the other parts of the world and you know, are right here also. So we end up having a country full of some of the best black people from all over the place. Uh, so I feel like this is a, it's a gold mine where we have to keep tapping into and keep building that connection. Cause once more of us are there in Africa and running business like how I like this, like how I like how we run business, like here in Georgia, I've been this privilege to be around this, this professional black people that's about the highest level of running business. And unfortunately my issue is, and again, no disrespect to this, anyone operating African continent, cause you know, cause yes, there are professionals, people that are operating, but unfortunately most of the people that we have connected to don't have the best professional energy. And it's just being real. And even when you try to get people to step their game up, people think it's just okay because it's the norm. Like I've been living here in Georgia and I've been around all kinds of talented 
business people. And whenever we come together to get things done or we get things done in the city or the, or, you know, or the county, it's there. So those processes and practices can be put together by us as a people from the DAS with better management operation and things like that. And also another aspect of opportunity is creating opportunities for our children, uh, playgrounds and uh, educational programs. It it's, doesn't really make a lot of sense that a lot of us know a lot about Africa, but then when, we, when it comes to the African continent, knowing about us in the diaspora, there's not a lot of opportunity. So, that, so those things create opportunity in an educational way to where for those who wanna work grants and things like that here in America, you can get those things to create programs in Africa. So, uh, and then the, the thing that I love is the world of technology. You know, you have, you can, if, like 20 years ago, I saw a group of, uh, small group of Indian business people. And it was, I thought it was funny at first, but it, and then, but I realized that they were dead serious. They are saying that they were gonna take over the world of technical operations, basically have all of their people on phones and providing all of us technical service and, and customer service and things like that. And over the last 20 years, they've literally taken over that entire market. But that's one of the markets that I've built to where we do technical service and support. So a lot of things I've learned in the world of technology and a lot of things that we have learned together as a people, we can share with our children and share with the children that we have in the towns based on us building community centers and business centers. Uh, so the opportunities vary in all different ways. Um, and the best opportunity overall is basically organic farming. You can literally get to the point now where you're growing all of your food trees and all of the food that you want to eat organically and have access to a, a better quality of life. Uh, so, and then you can work those imports and exports to even different chains in Africa. Uh, one of the best things that went on in Africa last year is the, the Africa Free Trade Agreement. So now it opens up to where me and you or any of us could be in one country and then we are enterprising in another country and we're moving goods and, and then there's less of taxes and tariffs as far as this, our connection. So some of the barriers are breaking down more and more. And it, what it really based on is those of us who can be innovative and say, hey, this is what I can come do in Africa. But then you have to have all your backend and things like that. And that's why the network that we're building, we're trying to encourage more of us to like, when we get to Africa, we connect together and enterprise together I think that's excellent. Um, I, I'm really interested. You mentioned um, manufacturing and manufacturing opportunities, and then also the um, just the the difference in, I guess, business culture between um, the different cultures. So, I guess my question would be: If we wanted to do, if we wanted to look into possibly opening up a man manufacturing um, facility or um, a manufacturing facility there, um, what outside of, how would you overcome that challenge, I guess is the question. Uh, and, yeah, we overcome it by having a group of attorneys and consultants. Okay. And all of the, uh, the professional people in that aspect, you have to get all of them on your side. And okay. that is the game of chess right there. Okay. Uh, so that's what we have figured out. You just, you, you just build those relationships and you build a bond where now someone understands who you are as a person. And now instead of them in a situation now where they would literally just take all your money and, and, and mess things up, they understand that them doing their part is gonna create more opportunities for us as a people. And, and then more important, all, all of our children. Um, and you speak to the, you know, and you have to have, you know, uh, as a man, I have to, you know, I have to have these man and man talk to all of the men, and I have to have, you know, have two two big strong guys in Ghana. We use as uh, basically enforcers in the world of just and this being real with, with you. So when we get when we go do anything, we send them to go talk to the people we need them to talk to, and they're they're not scared of anyone, and they're tough, strong military guys, and you know the deal get done, and no one rips us off or nothing goes wrong. Uh, but um, I don't expect the average person to be able to just figure those things out. You have to have a combination of just streets, uh, the street energy of just understanding this tough guys and slick people and, you know, and things like that. And because now, you know, you're in a, you know, you're in a pool full of sharks and you have to find a way how to navigate and work it out to where 
things get done versus things falling apart. As we see in Africa, where a lot of time governments just come together next thing you know, all they saying, all people are saying is that they just taking money and nothing is getting done. Uh, so you just have to work those things and you have to just make sure that everyone that you're dealing with have a whole lot to lose. Uh, so we just make sure that we find the best uh, lawyer that, you, that represent a law firm where he has a whole lot to lose. He's not gonna just destroy his career for no type of money. The same thing with a chief, because some chiefs, I don't, me personally, the only chiefs I want to deal with are just educated chiefs who have a whole lot to lose and they have real careers, not a chief that's been sitting around trying to sell people land over and over. And so you make sure that the people that you're dealing with, you make sure your people research them and make sure that you have people who can check them out. And plus, one thing that we know about everybody, we know where everybody live at and everybody operate and things like that. Uh, but People sometimes just do business where they don't know people. There's no track record. And I'm like, why would you send somebody $7,000 to do a, a gold and a diamond deal for you just because they made some presentation you didn't see their face and no documents or, or nothing in place. But unfortunately, a lot of people do these things. And that's why I had to step my game up because I'm like, I don't want no one to think that I'm involved in these things. So I'm showing people everything. You know, people see where we live at, what we're about, our whole crew and our whole 15 plus years of business that we'll never do anything to destroy. So, and the people that I have there that uh, will represent me as a consultant will be somebody that I've known for 10, 15 years. And I've, we've done a lot of money business in Ghana where every time we do business and money is involved, everything works out. So it will take some serious people that you have had to build relationship with to where you can do these things. And then and that's, how, that's what took us so long to even start. And you know, it took me about into the 13th year for me to feel comfortable traveling to Africa to feel to put, to sign my life on land deals, which I know I'm gonna be, have to be responsible for and things like that. And um, bringing in my crew where we sign, you know, we sign incorporations together and things like that. And I can trust my partners with certain things in Ghana. Uh, so what we were building is to where we would represent as an organized firm represent your investment of, if you want to go build a factory, uh, we'll have our attorneys and all the people, make sure all the paperwork is good, make sure that uh, we have builders that can be accountable uh, for the money that's being paid. Just like we have builders building their homes in the country and some people don't always, they're not always there, but their homes get finished and you know no one has complained that someone has overcharged them. That's because I've got my enforcers together to sit down with all of the builders and and just have a man-to-man -man talk with them and basically put the fear of you know the devil in them and let them know that these are my business partners and nothing can go wrong because when these things go wrong it messes up all of our money in business and things like that and then if we look like a fool like we can't put our money together and invest and do business so i want to represent the next generation of us taking business to a serious level in africa because i've heard the horror stories i've even talked to different scholars i know are people who have, that have been in this business way before me and that are good friends and you know was people who I look at when they were doing this business and traveling to Africa and we just had private conversations and I tell them that I noticed these things go on but me and my crew have been able to navigate and get things done and and and, and I was like that's because we have learned from so many mistakes and so many people who have tried to do these moves and get themselves caught up and that's why I'm always telling people if they trying to make any move to Africa even if it's just having a conversation with us beyond us any document and consultant or anything Let's have a dialogue and talk because these things are not as simple and it would be nice if they work like how it works in the South here in America where your business stuff get organized, you get all your stuff together. Next, you know, you're enterprising and um, you're just up and running. Um, so it's not as that as simple unless you have those connections. So the good thing is we are your connection in Africa and your connection to make sure everything works out good. No, that you actually answered my follow-up question. Um, um, with that, and we, we, we've had similar issues here in the States, but um, my follow-up question was, how is it for women in business um, and navigate, navigating the business community? But I believe you answered that with um, making sure that you're connected with organizations such as yourself that can um, kind of go before you <laughs> and make sure that um, you're connected with the right people. Um, but do, do you have a lot of women in business there? Uh, no, I don't have a lot of women in business. And that's what I'm talking about, that the diaspora with all of this energy, you know, it's a market for all of us. Uh, but 
it's not a big interest for us as a people, which I do understand 100%. Uh, but our goal is to keep on trying to just push information out and let all of us know it's okay to so come here, put your money together and enterprise. Uh, my greatest example is always going to be uh, Sister Imacus from One Africa, one of my eldest sister from the Bronx, New York. She came there and built the resort that we've been going to from 2006 all the way up to now uh, called One Africa Resort in Elmina. It's kind of like in the middle of our journey and things like that. And she is the queen of, of black business in Af Africa. She is enterprise and she, she used to do the same business I'm doing now, uh, tourism. Mm -hmm. She's doing it at a high level. Um, so that's one person I know in her and some of our sisters. But as far as a newer generation, I don't really see much, but I'm sure they're out there. Okay. Excellent. I won't dominate all of the all of the time and questions, so I will I will turn the floor over. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can just talk about many things, uh, literally. No, this is good. I'm very excited. I think, um, you know, for um, me, uh, Chancia, I went to go this year. Um, and then also my family wants to take the family trip next year. And they're going to be doing the monthly um, thing. And I'm a little scared, but I'm glad that you're there to organize us a little better. Because <laughs> Our family is, um, they're going to need a lot of direction. Um, so I may even need to put up a website for our trip just to make sure they're getting your information and meeting all the deadlines um, and things like that. But you said the visa should take about three months. No, it takes so, seven days. And uh, you can start doing a visa uh, anywhere from two to four months before your departure. Okay, before the departure. So we're leaving in December. So that would be... October, November, December, so October. Okay. Mm -hmm. And did you um, go over the medical um, thing, um, what's needed on the medical side? I don't really have much uh, medical uh, requirements. Uh, you have to take a COVID-19 uh, test and uh, if you have a vaccination card, then um, you're, for the most part right now, you don't have to take the COVID-19 test. But uh, we still usually just take a COVID-19 test because it's just one of those things where this, we're just used to taking. Uh, but in Ghana, that's what they have um, with the vaccination mandate. So if you have a vaccination card, that will save you from taking a COVID test before you get there and save you from taking one when you have to leave. As currently as they have it now in the travel advisory, which at any moment can change. So <laughs> I usually keep up with those things. I'm still going to do the malaria and um, the yellow um, fever. Uh, was it the yellow fever? I can't remember which ones uh, I did last year. Uh, yellow fever. So if individuals want to spend that money on yellow fever, it's up to them. It's uh, it's something that's not even easy to get access to. Um, and they do have, I want to say there's a newer vaccination that's covered yellow fever and some other things. Uh, mm, but okay. That's just what I've uh, heard. So. If you can get the yellow fever, you can uh, get that. And as long as the details is explained and it covers it, you're good. And then for those who want to just bring exempt uh, letters and things like that, uh, they can also do that. But it's uh, not a big deal of, of something that would literally physically stop you from entering the country. But uh, I've seen where one, once or twice it may be acts of, and then you know you just show them your documentation or you just you know let you, you know let them know something else. But uh, okay. it's not something that's gonna stop you from, you know, getting in the country. Like no one is gonna like hold you hostage because you don't have one. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And last question, and I'm done for the night. Um, when you um, do the land, when you purchase the land, do you get to choose where your house is built? Is built or? Uh, yes, you get to select uh, based on the community layout. Like uh, for the 15 acres, we have 50 plots from one to 50 that individuals select. And then uh, the other land, the 60 acres, it goes from plot number 51 all the way up to uh, 240 or 200 plus. Mm -hmm. What is the, what is the um, community surrounded by? Uh, the, go ahead. Is it is for example, is it coastal or is it inland and it's coastal? There's two 
miles away from the beach and it is two hours away from the main city, Accra, and then two hours away from the next main city, uh, Cape Coast. Uh, so that puts you more in the tropical middle area, close to the beach. Uh, so that's the type of land we're looking for where we can just grow all of our tropical paradise, eventually get access to the beach land and you know, get involved in resort building and building our own beach town and things like that. So we wanted to get something where we can literally grow for the next uh, 10 to 50 years and uh, not be limited and just have all types of land, which is just tropical because we can grow everything we need to grow. And then we're also about, um, we're also close to a freshwater lake. So we have, so you're in the right environment to get all the water you need and grow anything that you need. And then the best thing about it is not noisy. Excellent, excellent. And so, um, well, and that's that's it for now. <laughs> I know I'm like I have a lot a lot of questions, but I'm not gonna overwhelm. I see it's already an hour and a half. But um, thank you so much. Questions. That's it. <laughs> you have questions, we have answered. The goal is to go over the information until you don't have any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they will keep coming up because now I'm envisioning. And so I will keep having questions about every little detail. My other question was, well, who's going to do the farming? Um, and should I be prepared to take courses in farming? Or um, is, that, is that something where we can identify um, partnerships or someone to assist with that and how much does that cost and things like that now i mean what we have is is uh community energy so in a community energy you know you have people picking up trash and you have people you have people planting food uh, some at least some of everyone's energy has to go towards these things uh to mm -hmm. where you have and then in general you know you have professionals that can do it but you know you also want a people of a community to participate in its own nation building and its own process and encourage the children that this is the way of life, um, that we can't just go around and cut everything down and then build concrete jungles all over the world, you know, and then depend on supermarket chains and things like that. Uh, so, you know, you're getting back into elements where, you know, we were at least even like in a true situation, maybe everyone has to put maybe three to five hours a week into doing some farming, maybe another three to five hours a week into understanding sustainable development to where we're maintaining our property, maybe one hour a week where different groups are going around the town and cleaning up trash and things like that. And we're recycling our own uh, things that need to be recycled. And just participating in just a true community where we all participate and make it look beautiful. Um, like. Um, I went to a friend neighborhood and and I was just looking around. I was like, I was like, you guys are just okay with this? Like, like all this trash all over the place. Like I can't like as soon as I look out there, if I see a piece of trash, I, I open my door and I'm out there picking it up. And it's just hmm. it's the element of this, uh, you know, those from those basic things. And then so on even the beach right there, the beach, you know, beach is one of those things if you don't have people going down there cleaning the beach or out there in boats and picking up trash and things like that. Um, so we're in an environment to where we can control those things. And then, uh, the, you know, we've talked with the chief and, you know, we have something special to work on. And that's have to just keep building relationships and keep showing people more of it. And then the other outside surrounding, as you mentioned, surrounding, it's basically this a suburban area where people are building their homes. So when eventually people see supermarkets and other things, because you have other people that are looking and they're seeing the growth of the area and they're building on it. The good thing about it was able to lock down on the land deals and pay for one, one land uh, before there's increase on the price and things like that. So that's one of the best things I can say to us. Uh, we can work deals out to where you have payment plans on the land also. Mm -hmm. And the um, Ghanaian government is pretty stable. Um, pretty stable. I would say yes, uh, based on the fact of this not seeing civil war, civil unrest, and situation to where this inflation gets too high, you know, you're going to have inflation from time to time based on the side of the floor of the, the world economy is going. Uh, so, but since I've been going to the country for the last 15 years, very peaceful and very economic stable, uh, including politically stable, you know, like it's not one of those situations where every time you have somebody in government, you always have somebody trying to overthrow them. I know sometimes that's uh, what it seems based on just the list of countries historically in West Africa that's had craziness going on, including Ghana in the 80s. 
Uh, so I'm proud to just, you know, say that um, you know, they're in the right direction. And uh, you know, we have people there that have gotten citizenship. Uh, usually don't have any issue with getting the group members that need you know, uh, residency to where they can live in the country long-term. Uh, some other countries we have had issues with that, but that's one thing I could say about Ghana. We're just close to where we have got a lot of things accomplished. And that's also based on this more and more of us coming Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, all right. Thank you. I will. Um, I appreciate you taking this time with us. Um, and uh, I guess more to come. You'll let us know when to begin the process and all that good stuff. Uh, yes. Right now, what we have set up is um, if you look into journey with us in December, uh, we are accepting deposit, uh, been accepting deposit since uh, last year. Uh, so once you lock in a deposit, that's what reserves your tickets and also reserve your accommodations. And then you just uh, pace yourself. And um, you know, once we receive payment, we send your receipt. And that's how we keep up with the details. And then I just add you to uh, whatever um, tour you're going to, just add you to the WhatsApp group. And then in that WhatsApp group, that's where all of the updates are posted. and. Um, a conference call details and then when we get closer to the tour like the last month then we go into private conference call and we go more into the, the preparation details and make sure that everybody have everything set up and make sure we have flight um, flight arrangement sequence to where everyone is flying on whatever specific airlines we connect them together and then we do pick up for each group where they're coming on delta klm air france uh, based on this the situation the, the reality of it now is we have a lots of option now to get to Ghana. I remember it was very, very limited 15 years ago, uh, but uh, it's a country that has merged. So many countries now are flying into Ghana. So we have, th but those are my four main um, ways to get you to Ghana. That's all. Okay. How, how big is the group that's scheduled, that's currently um, scheduled to go in December? I have uh, 15 people confirmed. And then I got a list of about 20 something people who say they are gonna go, but um, my goal is to <laughs> go to the list and just uh, reach out to them and collect deposits. Uh, sometimes that's the issue that I have is I don't spend enough time trying to go around and collect deposit because you're just you're marketing and sharing information. But uh, once I start doing that more and more, which I'll be doing this week uh, again, um, and that group number should grow. So it doesn't really matter the size of the group. Um, we've been able to, and if it goes larger than 50, we can do two buses and things like that. But um, based on the flow, you're looking at anywhere from 20 to 40 people. Okay. And just again, how much is the deposit? Uh, the deposit is uh, $400 and you can pay as much beyond the $400 and then just pace yourself from there. Okay. And then okay. The, the, uh, once you, uh, on the website, you can click on payment options, but also I can send you a payment option email and it will just give a list of uh, different uh, payment options and um, which uh, we have recommended, which is a Zelle Pay. Then you also have um, uh, PayPal based on what people are looking to pay. If they're looking to use debit or credit cards and it has to be processed through uh, PayPal and things like that. But um, there's, no, there's no payment options that uh, we don't accept. Uh, it's just based on people's comfort and what they want to use. And could you could you send that out to us? Uh, yes, I can send you the um, the payment options email, and then also for documentation, uh, once you're on the main menu of our website, there's a payment options link. Okay. And I'll send you the the same thing also via email. Uh, that way, you just have the full details with you. Excellent. All right. So perfect. So you. You guys are literally clear on the overview and the itinerary, and um, then also have a preparation link. And uh, when you click on a link to where you have access to the tour overview and so on, uh, and that is just what to pack, what to bring, what to organize. And I usually have it scheduled to where we talk about the meetup points, uh, baggage weights, and things like that. Excellent. Wow, it's so organized! Thank you. Well, appreciate it. Yes, uh, it's something I've uh, <laughs> it's uh, 15 plus years in this experience, and it is uh, just 18 years of just doing research and just traveling in Africa and just putting together something to where um, I just don't 
I just don't feel like we can do the things that we can accomplish in Africa. We just can't accomplish here. Like, like in this county, let me try to go. I've seen developers get land since I've been here, and they just build all the homes, all the everything here, and um, none of us have anything to do with it. Uh, but I'm sure if you know we try to compete, there'll be a problem and things like that. So I just look at that as a motivator for us to just do it in Africa, where we actually, where people actually want you to be and you know want you to be in. They're gonna show you love, and the chief is gonna say, hey, "I'll give you some more land if you're gonna build a soccer field for the children and things like that." Uh, so I just feel like uh, let's focus as a people where we're actually needed and wanted, and then since we have all these resources here in America, let's flip it and use it. I couldn't agree more. And so last, we will be able to meet the chief, right, when we come. Ah, uh, yes, absolutely. Um, okay. I'm scheduled for uh, December 29th. Um, and uh, all of the December journeys, uh, he's always there with us. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so appreciate um, all of you and thank you for processing it all. And uh, what I can do is just follow up with you in a few days and we can just, um, just go through some other details if um, certain things cross your mind in a day or two. Yes, thank you. I'm so excited. Absolutely, I'm very excited and looking forward to meeting everyone. And it was just nice meeting all of you. And we'll just keep on connecting and appreciate Absolutely. reaching out because uh, that's what we depend on people reaching out because uh, we don't know who's interested in what we do. And I'm not one of the people that want to go around and just give people flyers and things like that. I just rather this um, market information. So. Thank you for searching online and coming up and clicking on the links and seeing videos and things like that. So that's which has brought us together. So everyone else that's listening, you know, reach out. Um, I'm available to connect, uh, talk, Zoom presentation. You can anyone that's accessible here in Georgia, you can come right here to our office here in Jonesboro and we can sit down and talk. I can do our presentation that we usually do here um, uh, with more detail. So. Um, sharing that also with you in case uh, you're up in Georgia, you never know uh, throughout the time frame. Uh, people fly in sometimes and long layovers or flying sometimes and here for a few days or truck driving or passing through, whatever the situation may be. Uh, so just letting, you know, I'm available to, for, to connect and beyond that, if we don't connect before we travel together, I usually just meet everybody at the airport or in the country and then you know, let's keep it going. Sounds like a plan, all right. So perfect. So family, you take care. Good night. And the journey continues. Good night. The journey continues. <laughs> Good night. I'm excited.